got your Bibles, turn with me for just a few minutes. We're going to do things a lot different today than what we used to do. I love everyone here. I want you to know that. Homecoming is next Sunday. So we need to get ready for homecoming by giving our hearts to Jesus. And if you've not done that, this would be a good day to do that. Yes, We're going to take the Lord's Supper here in just a few minutes. And I'm reading from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 because I want you to be prepared. I don't want you to take something that you shouldn't take or do something you shouldn't do. We're going to do this God's way. God's put this on my heart and I must do it this way. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I want you to look at something. It says, For I have received of the Lord, in verse 23, I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered. Unto you, that the Lord in Jesus Christ the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take heed, this is my body, which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. <clears throat> For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup, of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh, I want you to listen to this very carefully, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthy eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, yes. we should not be judged. Amen. I read this, and I want you to understand this. And I want the church to get ready. We're going to come on this altar. And we're going to pray. And we're going to make sure that we're right where God wants us to be. Because taking this wine and this bread when you're unworthy is dangerous. Very dangerous. I don't want anybody to do that. And I don't want anybody else to say anything about anybody that's not taking part in this. That's none of your business. What we're doing here is sacred, very sacred. So at this time, I want to ask the whole church if they will. Let's come around this altar. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's make sure our sins are covered by the precious blood of Jesus. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, dear God, I ask you, Lord, to have mercy upon me. Oh, that I can be the best of the I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins, dear Heavenly Father, if there's anything in my life here about me anymore. Oh, that does not need to be there. Please, dear Jesus, have mercy upon me. Lead us and guide us, love us and keep us. 
and use us for your glory. Dear Heavenly Father, we might be the vessel that you would have us to be. Do the thing you might have us to do. So this day, dear Heavenly Father, I this this day unto you. And Lord, we can be the vessel that you need us to be and do what you need us to do. So lead us and guide us. It's his perfection. Lord, let your spirit spread through this congregation. And let them get a good glimpse of Jesus and what he did on the cross of Calvary for us. That's what I can do. I cannot. I need your prayer. I need your joy. I need your love, dear Jesus. I need you to take hold of me and use me for your glory. This I ask Lord, in the glorious name of Jesus. What we say, how we say. Thank you, Lord, for us receiving. Receive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Rick, don't go too far. your Bibles. I'm going to turn to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26. My Jesus and your Jesus had done everything that God sent him to do. Jesus healed the sick and raised the dead, cast out demons. He made a new covenant, a new testament for us to live by. He completed his mission completely. Now, no doubt he's been to Jerusalem many, many times in his life to take the Passover. But he's coming today to take the final Passover that he'll take with mankind. He's come into Jerusalem and he knows his job is finished. But he wants together with his 12 disciples and even knowing that one of them is even a devil. He knows he's going to be betrayed He's told them he's going to be crucified. Many times he's tried to make them understand this, but I don't think you ever can understand something like this really, like you need to. But I want you to think about one person through the eyes of Peter, is what I want to title this, through the eyes of Peter, one of the disciples. So in the, the Bible, in the 26th chapter of Matthew, starting at verse 26. I want you to know before I read this, though, that the, at this time, Jesus is coming to Jerusalem. They call, holler, Hosanna to the king because he's coming to give them eternal life. They spread their garments, they spread branches to welcome him into the city. But he knows where he's going. He's headed for the cross. And he is ready for it. Are we ready for the cross? Are we saved by God's amazing grace or are we just fooling ourselves? We better know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we really are saved. Before you take this cut, before you break this bread, please make sure you're saved. So it starts here in the verse 26. It says, and they were eat, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take eat, this is my body. It means something, don't it? It means something what we're about to do. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it unto them saying, drink you all of it. Well, this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Thank God if you're saved today. 
You're saved because the blood of Jesus cleansed you. You're saved because the saving grace of God made you whole. When you were so lost and so burdened, Jesus came by and touched your life. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of this vine until the day which I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now it says here, when they had sung a, a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Well, let's turn to John chapter 13 and see if something else was going on about that time too. John 13, verse 1. We're going to end up in Luke in a little while. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of the world unto the Father, having loved his own, that's us, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Yeah. If you're saved by God's amazing grace, you are loved to the end. And I'm telling you what, when this body falls off, we'll just begin to live. We, we're not living right now. We just think we are. Yeah. But what's coming ahead is really wonderful. Verse 2 says, And suffer being ended. The devil have now put in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father has given him all things into his hand, and that he comes from God and went to God, he raised from supper, laid aside his garment, and took a towel and gird himself. What I started to do was to bring the water and the towel up here and get Virgil up here. Virgil was going to be Peter. Because I want you to think about Peter. You see it every bit of this. He's watching all that's happening and he knows there's more coming. It says, Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, doth thou wash my feet? The one in that day that would wash someone's feet when you was bidden to come to their house would be the lowest person in that community. The servant <coughs> would be the one that would wash the feet. I want you to see that Jesus has become the servant mm -hmm. so that you can have eternal life. Mm -hmm. He has bowed himself lower than any human being ever lowered their self. Yes. And now he's come to Peter. Peter is looking him right in the eye and he's seeing Jesus, the Son of God. He's seeing the one that came to die and give us eternal life. He's looking right in his eyes and he's not turning his head. But he said, Lord, doth thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Have you got a part with Jesus today? Has he saved your soul? Has he given you the eternal life? I'm saying all this because I don't want you to take no part of this that we're doing. If you're not absolutely right. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hand and my head. Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needeth not say to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. Mm -hmm. He's talking about Judas. Yeah. Luke. <laughs> 
Going to the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 39. Glad to have all these visitors today. We want you to come back next Sunday. Be with us in our homecoming. Yes. But I'll tell you the homecoming I'm looking forward to. <laughs> when this old body just drops off and Jesus shouts with the sound of the trumpet and comes to get his people, that's the, that's the homecoming I'm looking forward to. Well, I know I'm going. Do you know you're going? You, go. you better know. Better not guess at it. Verse 39 of the 22nd chapter of Luke says, And he came out and went as he walked to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. I've been to that mountain. We, we drove up to that mountain in a bus, but we walked down when you're coming out of Jerusalem and you're coming into the Kindron Valley, it's like one of these valleys here. When you start up that mountain to the Mount of Olives, it is very, very, very steep. I mean, when, when I was coming down it, I had to be careful not to slip because it, it's that steep. Peter is going to, he's he just seen Jesus do all these things he did. Now Peter is looking at Jesus as he's getting ready to walk up to the Mount of Olives. And he's watching him. Jesus is weak right now. But he's going to be weaker later. Because his body is going to go through something that is beyond anything that our minds can even comprehend what he's about to go through. And he's looking at Jesus. And he's following him and he's watching as he goes. Jesus had already told him many times before that I'm going to be crucified and betrayed. And them disciples, just like we do, they say, no, he, he's too powerful. There ain't no way he can do that, but, but it's coming. Verse 40, And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray, that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast and knelt down and prayed. Won't you see something? If I throw it, it'll go a long way. A stone cast. A stone cast. So Peter is kneeling down right here. Jesus is right there. And Jesus says these words, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, Strengthen him. Can you imagine what his body's going through? Can you imagine the strain that's on Jesus right here as he's facing the most challenging thing that's ever known to mankind? And Peter is getting drowsy, but he's hearing these words. How do you think Luke got these words? Luke wasn't there. Somebody had to give him details on what was happening. 
And there appeared unto him angels unto heaven, strengthened him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he arose up from praying, he came to his disciples, and he found them sleeping for sorrow. And said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray. Let us let not, lest ye enter into temptation. The crowd comes with swords and staves. They come, if you've ever been to Jerusalem, there's an olive tree. Big olive tree has been there for 2,000 years. I believe Jesus was praying under that olive tree. You can't get in it, you can't touch it. It's got an eight foot fence around it and you can't get into it. But if, can you imagine He's healed the sick. He's raised the dead. He's cast out demons. He's done all these things because he loved mankind. And so here comes a crowd to get a hold of Jesus. In one place, they came to him and they said, we're looking for Jesus. And he said, I'm, I'm he. And they all fell back because the power of God was so strong. They asked him again. He said, here am I. He had to reduce his power so that they could take hold of him. Woo! I felt that. There's power today in my Jesus. There is. They tied him up. They spit on him. They kicked him. They bruised him. And they took him down to Caiaphas Hall where they were going to accuse him of doing ungodly things and he never done one thing wrong in his entire life. Not one. If you want to jump over to 55, somebody's there watching and when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were sat down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid behold him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And Peter denied him saying, Woman, I know not. I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also with him. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Can you imagine Peter right now? Can you imagine the shame and the guilt Jesus is looking right in Peter's eyes. He knew what he would say. He knew what he would do. Does he know what you and I will do? Oh, yes, he does. You ain't hiding nothing from God. You ain't hiding nothing from him. So I'm here today tell you that I'm going to give you one more time. We're going to do something here in a minute. We're going to take the Lord's Supper. But I want to ask you 
in your heart, and I don't care who's sitting beside of you, I don't care who knows you, who's talking to you. If there's any chance in the world that you could give your heart to Jesus right now, and he is looking in your eye just like he looked in Peter's eye, he's looking right at you right now. I want you to get up out of your seat and I want you to come to this altar and I'm going to confess you to confess your sins and ask God to forgive you of your sins because I don't want you to take any part of this until you have committed your life to Jesus Christ. You won't need a song. You won't need anything. I'm just going to bow my head and wait on you to come. Heavenly Father, Lord, while they come, while your eyes are up on me, while they know they're in sinful life, while they know, dear God, that they can't go on in the life that they're living right now, they've got to have a hell. I beg you, dear God, to let them come to this altar and confess their sins and wipe away, Lord, all the sin from their life and let them become born again right now in the name of Jesus, dear God. Change these lives, Father. Change these lives right now, Father. The Lord, they need help. They've come this day, dear God, seeking something. And the only something that they need is Jesus Christ and their Lord and Savior. So, Father, in Jesus' name, let them come boldly. The Bible says to come boldly unto the throne of grace. So today, Father, let them come that their sins would be completely cleansed and they would be ready to accept the Lord's Supper. This day, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Ricky, if you and Rick would come and help me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of life and the gift of your son Jesus to us. We thank you, Jesus, for being obedient to the Father and doing what you saw the Father do. We thank you, Lord, that when you came to the earth, you became flesh. And Lord, you broke down your flesh and that was the thing that separated us from God. And you took on our infirmities, our sicknesses, our diseases, Lord, our sins on your flesh. And Lord, this, this bread, Lord, we pray that everyone's eyes would be open to the finished work that you accomplished with your body. That in this bread, Lord, with folks that are in this congregation, Lord, if they need anything, Lord, they can receive what the body with that middle wall of partition that divided us from the Father, that it would be, their eyes, spiritual eyes would be open in this uh, congregation, that they could see you clearly, Lord, that you've already paid the price for their deliverance yes, and the yes. price of their sins. And receiving this body and receiving it as with their minds fixed on you, Lord, that it's, this is the body of Christ. And we, we would pray, Lord, that this would, uh, receiving this, into us Lord that we would see you and understand there is a it is finished work yes, and Lord help us Lord to ob obtain the things we're supposed to obtain while we have life in these bones God that we'll glorify you Lord with all that we do and all we say and Lord that our actions Lord would be that consistent with being Christ like God help us Lord to obtain these things Lord to glorify you and you alone Lord in Jesus name bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness. But I am the bread of life. 
He was broken for us. Yes, he was. And we could go into the Holy of Holies. Amen. And boldly approach the throne of grace. And obtain you, mercy yeah. in our time of need. Thank you, Father, for the bread of life. Amen. Now, Rick, if you would bless this drink that we're about to receive. Lord, we thank you, God, for this, uh, this wine that represents Lord, the blood, Lord. We thank you for all that you had to go through, Lord, that shed your blood for our sins, Lord. With that, you shed your blood, Lord, there will be no permission of sin, Lord. Yes. And we thank you, Jesus, so very much to God. Thank you. Give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 All right, if you all would pass it out to the people. They're going to bring you some bread if you receive it. I hope that all your sins are covered of this Bible. Take the bread and hold it. We'll all take it at the same time. The wine will take it at the same time. just a few minutes we're going to do the old fashioned foot washing most churches don't do it anymore but the ladies will be going over here and the men will be going over in the fellowship hall and I'm going to read what my Jesus did back in Matthew if you'd like to watch as we do foot washing we'd love to have you watch maybe the next time you want to give your heart to Jesus we'll wash your feet preparing that drink I spilled quite a bit of it and I hope that you're not going to spill the blood of Jesus I hope you make it sacred to you we're preparing for a homecoming but I'm telling you what one of these days when we get to God's heaven, according to Revelation 19, there's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. Yes. And we that are saved are going to sit down with the table with Jesus. Yes. And He is absolutely going to serve us again. Yes. Thank God for what He has done in our life. Thank you, Jesus. For all your blessings. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm shaking all over. This is so powerful. Now, if you would serve me. Yes, sir. I'm going back to Matthew 26. I want you to think about this. Jesus knows about Judas. He knows. When I think about Peter, 
Peter is one of them disciples that looks at him and takes everything in. And he knows what Peter's about to do. Peter's going to step out of the book of Acts and he's going to cause 3,000 souls to get saved. Mm -hmm. Jesus knows this. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. You take of this and you take of this, Jesus knows what you're going to do with the rest of your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't fail to do it. Whatever God puts on your heart, this is a weird service, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't sing, we didn't have a big time. But right now, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it unto them, saying, Drink ye all of this. And he took the bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. So let's take eat right now. Yeah. This is Welch's grape juice, right? Mm -hmm. But things change when it enters your mouth and enters your soul. It becomes the actual blood of Jesus. I want you to think. They beat Jesus just about completely to death with the cat of nine tails. They told him to get under that cross and you carry it up Golgotha's hill. And he did. He put that old dogwood scaly bark on the back of his back and it bleeding so bad he couldn't hardly stand. And he climbed that hill and I've seen the hill of the skull. It's just like a horse's face straight up. But he climbed it. The cross was ready for him. He laid himself on that cross. They didn't drag him. They didn't force him. He laid himself on that cross. There was still some blood in his body yet. So they nailed nails through his hands and to his feet. And they raised it up and dropped it in a hole and it had to hurt so bad. <clears throat> but there was a, a man being crucified beside of him. And that man said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. And as his blood dripped down, it's here today. So let us drink the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <coughs> At this time, we're not dismissed, but if you're not going to take part in the foot washing, you can leave. And we'll see you next Sunday. And if you are taking part in the foot washing, the ladies are going over there. The men on this side. We thank you for your participating today. We thank you for being here. If by some means all of this has touched your life and you're not saved yet, I pray before you get home that God's saving grace will touch your life and you will be saved today. May God richly bless you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Me and some pushing over here, ladies over there.
nervous. And we're doing exactly what Jesus did.